Hi everyone, welcome to this uh, new video we're going to work today throughout the quick check multiple questions of chapter 22. The chapter is Frontiers of Microeconomics. Remember, this is a book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So the first question says, because Elaine has a family history of significant medical problems, she buys health insurance, whereas her friend, Jerry, who has a healthier family goes without. This is an example of moral hazard, adverse selection, signaling, or screen. So before uh, going to the answer, I want to explain again um, the like fast definition of those answers. The first, remember, moral hazard is a problem that arises when one person called the agent is performing some task on behalf of other person called the principal. So there is like a strict relationship between these two um, two people. The other, the adverse selection. So seller knows more information than buyer does. And then signaling offers a way of solving the situation of asymmetric information. So signaling as a way to inform private information. And then the screening, it happens when an informed party tries to convey uh, to convey informed party to reveal information. So definitely in this situation the seller, which is the insurance company, cannot have like more information of uh, the the insurer. And why? Because it's uh, definitely it, it, it's cost. So due to that it's really hard to have all the information of the insurer. So then usually remember keep in mind that every time that we call uh, or we talk about insurer company they face more uh, situation related with adverse selection then George has a life insurance policy that pays his family 1 million if he dies as a result he does not hesitate to enjoy his favorite hobby of bungee jumping this is an example of again these four and those are the four uh, situation. And again, we are talking about insurance. Um, then remember that it's really hard for the provider, which is the company, to really have the all information regarding the insurer, because they don't reveal information. So uh, as like the previous question, uh, Elaine does an inform explicitly ex or explicit way to the company that they have or the family have like a really background related with diseases so then this should be a problem again of adverse selection because seller knows more information that buyer does in this situation uh, or, or the other party has like different uh, information in this case the buyer has naturally more more uh, more information about that third before selling anyone a health insurance company, the Kramer Insurance Company requires that applicants undergo a medical examination. Those with significant pre-existing medical problems are charged more. This is an example of. So then, this is not a. Uh, we are not talking more anymore about more hazard adverse selections because we are talking more about the solution when there is already a problem of in the world of asymmetric information so then the answer should be between signaling or a screening signaling is something that for example when you get your diploma of a really good university and you go to get a, a job maybe the companies that they are trying to to fill a position they prefer uh, curriculum CV of students that they went to better or better or more qualified universities. So then this is a way of signaling because I already have a signal to you. If I find a way to find out for that information, this is more about situation of screening because in this situation they are assuming that okay, if, if you have like really uh, bad maybe but performing in this medical examination I can you charge you more and the prime could uh, um, much better the real price of the market so then this should be more related with the screening 
Fourth, the Condorcet paradox illustrates Arrow's impossibility theorem by showing that pairwise majority voting. Because this is, is inconsistent with the principle of unanimity, leads to social preferences that are not transitive, violates the independence of irrelevant alternatives, or makes one person in effect a dictator. Then, here uh, I want to explain again the, the Condorcet voting paradox. Remember, um, uh, this is based on public choice that this branch of, uh, of economics try to use uh, like tools how government works and how at the end of the day the population decide so then uh, this is an example of public car where it should be located there are many possibilities an example to understand the condor said uh, voting paradox then imagine that we have three outcomes a b c and then we have three voters uh, type one type two type three and this is the person of electorate and this is like the first second third choice for each voter so for example for age for type one should be better a for two b so on so forth so then let's imagine that we have that situation but then we're going to put people just to choose between two options b and c definitely type one will uh, choose b because she prefers b instead of c and then type two prefers b because b actually is preferred to the other two options then the last one type three um, uh, type three um, okay sorry so then this should be uh, just these two we already have that uh, they, they will have like 80% uh, because this one definitely should uh, choose A but in this situation 80% for B then imagine that people can choose between A and B so then the type 1 choose A the type 3 choose uh, A as well so then we have 55% uh, for A so then uh, A beats B right because A beats B in this situation B beats C so then A is the best option right but why in quotation mark because actually imagine that people can choose between A and C type 2 will choose C because preferred to A and the type 3 will prefer C so then the total of 65 percent so then what we can conclude here is like maybe democratic outcomes do not obey the property of transitivity in the, pref in the, the situation A is preferred uh, to, C to B, uh, B is preferred to C but then we can conclude that A should be, be uh, preferred to C what is false so then uh, depends on how we ask the result different definitely um, the majority vote by itself does not does not tell us what outcome a society really wants and then we can conclude that leads to social preferences that are not transitive then two political candidates are vying for two major and the key issue is how much to spend on the annual 4th of July fireworks the independence fest among the 100 voters 40 want to spend 30,000, 30 want to spend 10,000, and 30 want to spend nothing at all. What is the winning position on this issue? So then we have these four options. I recommend represent that in bars um, table. So then uh, chart. So we have here 30,000. Uh, so we have 40%, 10,000, 30% and zero nothing at all 30 percent so then what should be the magic number that uh, should be the winner so then remember it's like the medium vote so we're going to make like a weight average uh, vote so then we have 0 0.3 which is the percentage times zero then plus 0 0.3 which is 30 percent times 10,000 and then 0 0.4 times 30 percent then we have here 3,000 plus 12,000, we, we finish with 15,000, then should be B.
The last but not least, we have the experiment called the Ultimatum Game illustrates that people are overconfident in their own abilities, play Nash Cleaver in strategic situations, care about fairness even to their own detriment, make inconsistent decisions over time. So I want to explain again the, the situation of Ultimatum Game. So what we actually in the chapter is people care about fairness. So I guess that that's the answer, but we're going to go through it. So then, the ultimate game, it, it, uh, it is about two volunteers, important that they don't know each other, so they will play a, play a game and can win $100. Then, the game begins with a coin toss. Then, they will be A or B, depending on the situation. Then, A propose a division of the 100 between himself and the other player. Then the B, uh, the B guy is going to decide to accept or reject it. Then, if B accepts, they will get A's proposal. For example, A says, okay, uh, I'm going to get 50 and the other guy will get 50. If B accepts, both will get it. Or, if uh, B rejects, no one will take anything naturally. Obviously, B rejects, you will get nothing. Then, conventional economics will say that A will propose $99 to him and the rest for B. If B is rational, he will take it. Why if B is rational? Because if B is rational, he will or she will prefer 1 instead of 0, right? Then, the 99-1 split is the Nash equilibrium. Remember, Nash equilibrium is the part when no one has any incentive to deviate. In this case, for example, um, naturally, if the if the A will not change to to another move, which is the finally the guy who decides, then in real life the amount proposed to B is much larger than one because they can have compassion, and fairness plays an important role in the in the decision. Actually, B could get like really mad and just in order to avoid A getting money he will reject it, for example. Then, uh, we talk more about care about fairness, even to the own detriment. Okay, uh, the treatment. So, uh, I guess that was all for this video. Remember, this is like my point of view. Maybe you think that another answer could be valid. Please let us know. We are uh, building knowledge together. Thank you so much for watching this video. Bye-bye.